Hey, what's going on, BFL fam? I'm Carlos. Please welcome George Saharoff to Brooklyn Fragrance Lover. Hi there. I'm here at his place here in Chicago, and we're going to go through a little bit of the history of the Zaharoff brand, so keep it right there. Brooklyn Fragrance Lover. Thanks so much for tuning in today as always. I really do appreciate it and hope you're all doing great. So, how are you, sir? I'm good. Happy to be here. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you for your hospitality. Always a pleasure. Yes, <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it. I'm a big fan of your channel. And I'm a big fan of your fragrance. Let the love us begin. <laughs> <clears throat> so, why don't you take us back a little bit? So, um, I went to DePaul University. I wanted to be a fashion designer mm -hmm. since I was a little boy. And little boys don't grow up to be fashion designers. And I was told, no, you know, you have to do something else. By your family. Right. So I remember as a little boy, they'd say, what do you want to be when you grow up? <clears throat> and I said, I want to be a fashion designer. I says, no, George. Little boys don't grow up to be fat. You know, that's a, a woman thing. Fireman, lawyer, judge, whatever. Policeman. Yeah. And so I went to DePaul University. I majored in operations management in manufacturing and mm -hmm. purchasing here in Chicago. And my... Junior year, I started looking into uh, starting a fashion house in Milan, Italy. Because not only did I want to go into fashion, I wanted to get as far away as possible from home as I could. And gotcha. so we actually ended up in Milan showing in, uh, and being a part of the runway shows and selling and doing. And Amazing. I had a, a little clay bottle with a wood cap and a sprayer, and I took it to Nordstrom. And they bought it at that moment and it really changed my life it's not that easy no i've heard stories about estee lauder she tried and tried and tried right. to get into um bloomingdale's and then finally she one day went with one of her bottles dropped it on the floor yeah. everybody was asking what does that smell what does that smell and they called up the next day and that's how she blossomed but it's not easy to break into uh no and remember back in those perfume. days there was bloomingdale's gimbals Jacobsons, Macy's, Gimbals, wow. All of I mean all of the retailers that you had opportunities to present and now you're down to especially niche with Barney's being gone. What is there? Neiman, Sachs, and Nordstrom. Bergdorf, Sachs. Yeah, Bergdorf. And Barney's is about Sachs now, from what I heard. The brand is, they took the name. Okay. And they're gonna be doing a branded clothing and stuff. Okay. And Barney's are gonna be using the name, but it's very difficult for a, a small brand now to even break into the retailers, and that's why you guys you, your, you and your viewers are so important to this. So with the wood cap, the bottle, mm -hmm. they buy it and I get in my car, I'll never forget. And I'm like, I think this is gonna change my life. And it did. And so it ends up being this. This is the original, this is the original woman's fragrance. It was a woman's first, you didn't have a men's fragrance. Right, that's right. And so I wanted a wood box. So I wanted it something different with the wood box. And this is actually a, a gold, and I used the back of a knife to create the lines, and then I brushed cool. it with brown, and that's what, that's what this is. And so, oh, so here we go. What was that? I'll tell you in a minute. Okay. So this is the actual, uh, this is the original 1.7 ounce bottle, and I'll tell you this in a minute what, the, what this is. It's, it's it unrolled, but I'll tell you. So if you can see, the front of this femme version has the characteristics of the own bottle, just done a little differently, a little more feminine, of course, but the inspiration for the own bottle came from the original femme bottle. Right, and, we, and these bottles were made in Normandy. I mean, I made sure even at that time that it was all first class. I, I needed, and so this was made by Quest, who at that time was doing 24 Faubourg Hermes fragrance. They also did the Angel, okay. the Angel women's fragrance. And so this so, is the 90s, right? Yep. And, uh, and so you're looking at with this, uh, there's sandalwood, it smells beautiful. And this yeah. is what circled the room, and the, his face lit up and he goes, this is ours. Like literally, what you smell now is what it reminds me of. And so you're looking at, you know, Pink Osmanthus from uh, Madagascar. It's a floral oriental. 
And so I really, and I think the floral oriental is very much like a, a Zahara trademark. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, there's water lily, there's Bulgarian rose from the south of France, jasmine, sandalwood. It's, it's, a, it's a beautiful woman's fragrance. It's a really full and dense perfume that is definitely indicative of the times, right. those big and bold fragrances of the 80s and 90s. Um, it's definitely floral, it's it's very feminine, it's very vavavumi. Yeah, it's very, it's highly, uh, I don't want to say s s seductive, it's very seductive. Voluptuous? Voluptuous, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a sexy woman wearing this. Perhaps a little too much for people's taste these days, but I can definitely, definitely smell and appreciate the beauty of what this is from back then. And if you think about this, because the way the cap is, this cap, as you, we had talked about, it was a plastic cap. Mm -hmm. and, and as we went on and we were making more money, the investment was made on a new mold for the step of the bottle, because as you see right now, the cap goes around like this. Yeah. So we actually bought another glass mold with a step and it has a metal cap. Cool. So this bottle is over 25 years old and it still smells as yeah. if it's, it was made yesterday. It's very, beautiful. very beautiful fragrance. And so when we opened Nordstrom, we sold out, we had wait list. And so we had pre-sold it the month of September, October, November. And then the beginning of December, we launched. And in their history, they sold, never sold as many bottles as they did with the Zahara. That's Farm. amazing. And so I had to match those numbers the following year. And I came up with the idea of doing gemstones. So we took the glass, we took the mold for this, mm -hmm. and we made them in sapphire, we made them in emerald, and then I did a limited edition purple bottle for Burger Goodman. Oh, that must be gorgeous. It was Purple's just, my favorite yeah, it was a, And it was a limited edition just for Burger Goodman. We blew, we sold it very But the same juice. juice. The same juice. We did a, a Baccarat bottle, and I just want to... I could show you quickly. And so we only made, I only made 150 of these bottles. Look how beautiful this is. And we, $1,500 a bottle. Gorgeous. We completely In, sold out. Right the second one? Yeah, right here. It was $1,500 and we sold all of them the first day they wow. hit the stores at Neiman's and Nordstrom. How much is this retail for back then? Back then this was $55. Wow. 55 and the large was 95. And the men's was 45 and 95. Times have changed. Right, there's no way. And this was, what, uh, now you're looking at 20 some years ago too. So it was high, it was considered expensive back mm -hmm. then, higher on. So this was the women's. So we did the gemstone collection. I just have the one in sapphire. Then, and then it became a lotion, shower gel, candle, soaps, potpourri. Wow. This grew into an entire beautiful collection. And Carlos, we were, it was so incredible the amount of product that we were, that was being mm -hmm. sold that we were wondering, like, what are people doing with the lotion? Are they, like, mayonnaise? Are they eating it? Like, we didn't know. We couldn't believe. It was just beautiful. And so uh, time came to launch the men's. And we launched it in 2000, 2000, the year 2000. Okay. And it was on the market for only about a year. But here, I only have the tester. These are so rare that I actually bought this on eBay. Amazing. And but you don't have your own right? bottle. And so this one here, I wanted it to be the sexy, the sexy cu cu uh, counterpart to the women's. And so, if I could tell you very quickly, Sir Basil Zaharoff was one of the wealthiest men on earth of his time. He fell in love with the queen of, uh, to the king of Spain's daughter, and purchased the principality du Monaco, the uh, place mm -hmm. du Casino in Monaco, and married her and lived there for a period of time. And so I thought to myself. For this woman, what does she smell like when Sir Basil was f dreaming about her? And now we're talking about 1920s. Mm -hmm. When he's in his home and it's you know it's wood and co what was he? What, how did he fantasize about her? What did she smell like? And that was this fragrance. This Sir Basil was very private. He owned the uh, Orient Express mm -hmm. and he had his cabin number seven was his car and he'd show up at the railway station with a feather and a big cap. But he yeah. was very <laughs> private and he would hear. Who is that? And they go, oh, that's Zaharoff. And I thought, what would that guy smell like? And this is why I developed this fragrance. And so this is the original men's uh, uh, 3.4 ounce bottle. And you could see- It's reminiscent of the current one. Right? The, the current one is bigger. But yeah, so that's- that is That's the, thicker and- Right. So I'm gonna spray this. And so,
there, there's frankincense and myrrh in here, but it, the difference, there's a different feel. It's spicier. Mm -hmm. This smells like the current one, just not as creamy and full. Right. And remember, this is also, this had never been actuated, so this bottle is almost 20 years old, the fragrance as well. It hasn't gone off. I don't smell no, anything. I don't either. The, the one, what we did is more updated. It's a, uh, and it's a, uh, it's more updated. It is a little bit full, more fuller, more updated. I definitely can see, I mean, smell rather, how Claude recreated your original right. one. Now, when I first did your review, the review of your fragrance, there was a lot of comments in the comments section talking about the original right. one. That they hope that it smells like this one because they love this right. one. And there were people who remembered it. And I think, they did a great job. He did a great job, yeah. and you yourself, creative so, directing. So, him. someone who would be looking, who had been when wanting the original, would not be disappointed. No, with, absolutely with not. So, he did a good job with that too. You're right. So, this the notes are more, the notes are uh, uh, just fuller in here than in this one. Right. This has gone a little wispy-ish. Because in here there's geranium, there's ylang ylang, which I don't have in the original. Uh, there's so sandalwood myrrh cool. patchouli, which is there. There's agar wood, but there's pimento and, and geranium and anise. Instead of the anise, the liquor, I put pepper. And so it changes. Well, hold up, hold up. Oud in 2000? So you were one of the first. Yes, that was it. And that's why that, that was right before the oud became a big deal. And that's why I think the popularity too. And in 2001, I was supposed to be taken over by Escada. Uh, they were gonna open up 120 markets globally. Mm -hmm. And it was a big deal for me for that to be happening. And I had 40 employees all over the country. I had, you know, uh, uh, the regional man managers and then account executives. And then you had the rotators that would be in the stores. Mm -hmm. So we had an infrastructure in place because the, the business had grown so big. And when Escada said they're taking over, I got rid of everything. It took almost nine months to go through the contracts and the mm -hmm. signing and all that. And finally, the time came to sign the contracts and I was getting ready that day in the morning to fly to New York, the phone rang and my sister said, turn on the TV. And it was the, the planes crashing into the World Trade Center. Mm -hmm. And from that point, to December, I lost everything. That's and horrible. It was it was like hitting a brick wall because then because at that time, remember the retailers were trying to figure out what should they do. It was unknowns, and they wanted an infrastructure, and there was no way I could provide the infrastructure for the level of sales, mm -hmm. and that really was like a, a sorry man. It's okay, you know what? It's fine. I'm fine with it. And so what happened was um, I destroyed. Pallets and pallets, a whole warehouse of goods, because I would, did not want to be tempted to dump it into the gray market, because it would have, it would have, it would have not been good for the brand. Clothes were happening behind the scenes. Yes, and, alongside and, with this, exactly. not behind the scenes, but and, you know. And so the clothes kept going; it grew, and so I just focused on the clothes, and the fragrances had to get put aside. And I tried many times to re to revive the fragrances, or not revive. Actually, I want to use the word revive because in my head I had something that I wanted in the past. Mm -hmm. But when it actually came time to it, um, it was time to let go of the past and start something new. And so it's all good. It, it, it's a journey. It, I grew from it. It was incredible. And so I just wanted to do the progression. But from the from the original to what you have today, this is there so was an in between in one. between one. And so the Quest that made this fragrance was bought out by Givadon. Okay. which is a massive conglomerate. Mm -hmm. And they developed this because the, the uh, recipe for the men's the materials. had been gone. Mm -hmm. they, it was lost in the shuffle of buying the, between the buyout, the buying of the companies. So they developed this for Zaharoff, which you're going to see right now. So this was one that was presented to you for consideration. Right, and you see there's bottles, and so this was something that I was... The hell we have, you have the original... Right, and theme. it's a generic bottle. I mean, if you see it, this was this was meant as a test. I would not bring this, this kind of like to market, but it was a test. Mm, no. <laughs> right? I can see why you are passed on it. <laughs> it's, it's synthetic. It's heavy in synthetics. There's a frankincense note in there that right. I, I do like, but yeah, it is. 
definitely okay. this, heavily this, synthetic. And I, this gives me a headache, given you spraying it right now. And I don't Sorry. Know, <laughs> and I don't know if it's because of, well, because I'm smelling it, or I just get frustrated with just the mm -hmm. story, the overall story. So this is 2007, eight, six, seven, eight. And so this, this no, no, and there were boxes of it, and we threw it out. And so I only have like 10 or 12 left of these, and so I thought I'd bring it to show you. And then finally, in 2019, here we go. Beautiful. Well, you guys are up on this one. It turned out to be just a beautiful fragrance. You did hear about it here first from Stephen and myself right. here at BFL. You, I didn't realize, I didn't know about the community, and so when I first started out, I, I, you're not going to believe this, but I actually thought, what am I going to do? Am I going to tweet, you know, go buy a bottle? I mean, like, I didn't know how it all worked and how incredible the whole fragrance community, which I'm just amazed with. I love it's, it's rather large. Like, before I um, found out about online and Facebook and all the groups and stuff, uh, I was amazed to find that there are like-minded people who enjoy fragrance right. and who have large collections just like me because I've always had a large collection since I was 20-something. I had five to ten fragrances at any given time. And this is men's. You don't see this with women's fragrance. You see this with men. I don't know yeah. that, right? It's, it's a it's guy thing. Like yeah. Collecting watches, collecting cars, collecting fragrances. expensive fragrances. Although yours is not overly expensive. Um, it's yours niche. It's designer. It's designer. We had this discussion. Yeah, because you, you had clothing before. Because, but for me, uh, because it's not a license, and I, it came from my own uh, private money to, to make this. Um, I don't want to be pegged as designer, like it's one of the designer, because it's very niche. Listen right? to me. You know what I mean? Let me let me explain how I feel about designer versus niche. The niche doesn't make it automatically better than designer. There are right. some designers that are just as good as niche, and there are some niche that are not as good as some certain designer right. level fragrances. It's a matter of taste, it's a matter of uh, production and skill from the perfumer, and we all have different tastes, you know. Being more expensive or, or being niche doesn't make it better. Right. So don't let that designer thing. Okay. Because everybody loves this one. This is a very popular fragrance. Right. This was the buzz the whole year. Right. Everywhere, and I and I appreciate I, I appreciate you. I appreciate the community that I'm able to uh, live my dream, and and be able to and I know that and that's why you see me going out into the into the fragrance community mm -hmm. and and just being a part of it. I love it, you know. And that's the you know the review the reviewers. I love it, and we've got I've got some really big plans coming up with the, with the fragrance community as well, which is for another time. This was Zaharoff from. To, Right, this is 90, the women started in 95. 95. <clears throat> the men's 2000. This is around 2006, 7, which but was never made to market. Right, I call it the Zaharoff Reject. Okay. <laughs> and then we have the Zaharoff Signature for all, which is right now 2009. And so. Would you consider Fighters ever? You know, it's interesting you would say that. <laughs> so, um, I, I, at first I said I don't want to do any flankers, and then I realized that it's an, a part of fragrance collection, right? Most fragrances come out with flankers now. People like to enjoy, before you would buy, a man would have a fragrance for 20 years. Mm -hmm. Now we're changing it up all the time. And so when I spoke to Man, Man is the, the group that makes my fragrance. Mm -hmm. um, I said I'd like to do some flankers. And then, How many did you say? Seven. Okay. <laughs> and it was like, oh no, we're not doing seven. They shut seven. that down. Right, because they said that um, it's first of all, it's a lot of work. It's very expensive, but we'll do two. Why don't we do two and see? And over time, if you want to, you know, do limited editions, whatnot. So, I wanted to do one a little. I wanted to take the lavender note and mute it and bring out a, 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 a more woodier note. Okay. And so, it's right here. So this is the flanker that that will be coming out in 2000. I'll let you do it in 2020. And so you're like the first one to really... Thank you. Yeah, I'm honored. About it. <clears throat> so we did a version of this video for his channel. We just did a live on Facebook. This is an actual first impression. I'm going to tell you what I do smell though. When you first spray it, it smells like Zaharoff Signature Pro Home, but then it immediately goes darker. Mm -hmm woodier, 
creamier, and just outright sexy. Right. This easily could be called Faharaf signature for own noir or intense. Right. And when he said that, the first time on his video, I guessed it and I didn't know. <laughs> and if you guys can see it, it's the Haraf Noir for men. So when he said that, I was like, Carlos, did you see the label? You're like, I didn't see it. And oh, so man. yeah, so this is the Noir, and I'm working on the the other version, which is going to be more lighter and youthful. I can't wait till you bring this out because it really is my type of fragrance. Mm -hmm. It reminds me of things that I love, like Prada Long Intense right. and Frederick Mahl Dries Van Noten. In that, in that category? It's just and dark and like seductive. Dark and, yeah. and this gives you that impression too. Yeah, I, I love it. And this is a lab sample, so when it's actually made in the batch, you're gonna see it, it's gonna really pop. It's gonna be absolutely beautiful. Please go with that creamy, yeah. sexy, I'm excited about sandalwoody that. vibe, because it works, right. in my opinion. <laughs> I'm excited about that. So this will be coming out probably, I'm thinking, either uh, Father's Day or for the fall. So that's we'll only see. a few months away. Yeah, it's right around the corner, and so it's a lot of work. And so the packaging, everything, I'm very particular and picky with everything. So, yeah. So, yes, thank you. So as soon as it becomes available, I'm sure he's going to call me up and uh, we will share with you guys. But for now, thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much for your time thank and your you. presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. And thank you. Thank you for the support you gave me from day one, and I want to thank everybody, your viewers, uh, your subscribers. And everyone in Fracom, right. fellow I'm reviewers. very grateful, very grateful, lots of love. Hope you enjoyed, guys. We had a lot of fun talking about this. If you're new to this channel, please don't consider subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, click on the bell icon so you can miss notifications and reviews. Two constant giveaways, wonderful guests, like my buddy George here. Thank you. And all the fun always happening right here at BFR. Take care, stay blessed, and